Oklahoma taking on Texas Tech. Can the Red Raiders hold off Kansas? And for the first time in 13 years, will we have a different outright champion in the Big 12? Bob Wachusen, Fran Priscilla, and we get a chance, Fran, to watch Trey Young in somewhat of a homecoming tonight for he and his family. Born in Lubbock, son of uh, former Raider star Rayford Young, but the Red Raiders will not baby him tonight. Oklahoma has lost three in a row and six of their last eight, taking on a Texas Tech team that's ranked number seven in the latest poll, tying the best AP record and the best AP rating that they have ever had. That's a good start, though, for Christian James. Good matchup inside. James on Evans because Culver was guarding the point guard, so he took advantage of his size. tries a jumper that's off the mark the lob the freshman can't hit as Brady Manick right at the rim couldn't complete the alley-oop Texas Tech five men will touch it usually on every possession Lorenz Soriasa doesn't get the roll Trey Young will touch it on every possession. And well, he should. Absolutely. The numbers he's put up so far this season. He is responsible for 58% of the points. And Oklahoma has scored, but his first shot is rejected by Culver. And a foul drawn by Zaire Smith, so he will go. This, this is, is a free throw lot. Sorry, Bob. This is why you put a six foot five guy on Trey Young in that first meeting. Five different Red Raiders guarded Trey Young, and he tried to sneak one over fellow freshman Jarrett Colbert, could not do it. Exactly why he has the assignment early. Obviously, there are NBA scouts here tonight to watch this young man because he is on his way, you would think, to being the national player of the year. But the guy that blocked a shot, this is a guy that's raising some eyebrows in terms of pro scouts, isn't no, he? No question about it. Think about it. The second and third leading scorers for this very good team are freshmen. Zaire Smith, Derek Culver. Coming out party a little bit tonight. James knocks down a three off the feed from Trey Young. This time, it's Keenan Evans. Young gets it back. In traffic, he is bumped, no call. Now a call, traveling. Ruled on Richard Otis. Really interesting right there. They came back, they came up with that ball, they had a new shot clock, and Oklahoma was just frazzled. Get it back out, reset your offense, use that shot clock. And the best point guard in America you might not have heard that much about yet has the basketball right now. 12 in white. Keenan Evans is having an amazing season. And an amazing career because he's gotten better every year. Five to shoot. Odiasse faces up. Three to shoot. In the corner, unable to beat the timer is Culver. Well, this is one of those classic something's got to give games. We've got the best offensive team in America. No team averages more points than Oklahoma against the fifth best defensive team in America and at least statistically by far the best defensive team in the Big 12 in Texas Tech. Who's got the advantage? Well, I think Texas Tech does because in the last part of this Big 12 season, the transition points for Oklahoma are down significantly from 26 points on the fast break to 14. It's not an Oklahoma team that is running like it did early in the season. James 
forces one up and in. Great start for Christian James. He's got all seven for OU. Starting that win over at Kansas and Allen Fieldhouse. Nice cut. Pretty backdoor finds. Christian James with a chance to add a couple more at the line. And a great feed from Trey Young. Good start on the road, though, for Oklahoma. He's always wanted to be. And Bob Knight, when he took this job, he was looking for a junior college coach, a guy that would fit in, fit in with his staff. Chris Peard, he wanted a guy that had the connections of Texas, Oklahoma. Chris Beard was coaching at Seminole State. But he's certainly a Red Raider now. And what we've seen, Bob, and we got a taste of it today at the shoot-around, he has created a no-nonsense basketball culture. And we saw great enthusiasm, great preparation. Uh, I would say almost to the point of being anal, which uh, many coaches are. Every detail today we saw at that shoot round was covered at Seymour. Like the players have a buy-in, though, don't they? No doubt about it. We saw it today. They're, they're not number seven in America by accident. Scoop shot inside. Won't go for nine Stevenson, but it's back out to Evans. He knocks down a triple. It's interesting. He's not a great shooter. In terms of percentages, but boy, has he been clutch. Shard Odoms runs a man over. Knocks down Stevenson. Stevenson draws the charge. Remember today in the scouting report? There you see the hustle inside. And Keenan Evans knocking it down. And Bob, which way does Rashad Odoms like to drive? And what was told to those Red Raider players today? Do not let him go left. Good example right there. Zyre Smith lost his footing and turns it over. Family night here in Lubbock. We mentioned the Youngs. Zaire Smith, his dad, Billy Ray Smith. Played for a guy at Kansas State by the name of Lon Kruger. Young step back. Just a little bit short. The rebound pulled down by Keenan Evans. The big man tries a three. The line drive not there for Tommy Hamilton. Tommy spends a lot of time on that three-point line. Young weaving his way through traffic. Corner three is off the mark for Maddox. Straight away, Zaire Smith. Got it. First lead for Texas Tech. Wait till he grows up. The skill level, the athleticism. He and Culver both. Yeah, what a find. Great catch by Brady Maddock, but the freshman couldn't finish at point blank range. Evans lobs it. Zaire Smith regathers, and it's back outside. Hilton tries another three. That one's no good. Honey McNeese ends up with the loose ball. Nice. And again, stride. Great find. Freshman to freshman, Young to Brady Manning. That's that great vision we talk about. We call those early eyes. When he's got the ball in his hands, he's always looking up the floor. And Manic knows if he fills the lane with some hustle, he'll get the easy one. Texas Tech can come at you in waves. Another three. This one is good.
Tommy Hamilton buries a triple to put the Red Raiders back on top. Tommy Hamilton's confident, and he didn't hesitate. Three straight shots. Christian James stepped on the end line. Take a look at Trey Young. Let's watch his eyes when he gets it. Well, we won't see it here, but you do see how he sees Manic run the floor. Terrific. On the money. And he's been doing that all season, Bob. It's it's why you say, well, how does how do his teammates allow him to take some of the deep shots he does? It's because he's so unselfish as well. Those numbers speak for themselves. In games where Texas, excuse me, Oklahoma gets 55% of the points from Trey Young, points or assists, they are 12 and 2. The dame ready out there in place now of Keenan Evans running the point, helped out by Nyan Stevenson, who's the only player that stayed on the floor as McNeese rejects the drive. Numbers for OU. Young allows the flyby. Now he finds McNeese on the cut, but a foul will be called before that. As Justin Gray picks up the personal. And Wednesday, it's crossover night on ESPN and ESPN2. College announcers jump into the NBA. The NBA guys go back to college. So Hubie Brown and Jay Billis will have Virginia Tech and Duke. We'll have Mark Jackson and Dickie V in Boston for Clippers Celtics among the teams. All four games available on the ESPN app. So you can watch them simultaneously tomorrow night. Young foul. Still hurls one up. A oh, veteran move there by the freshman as he will shoot three free throws. Justin Gray watch got where, him on the wrist. Watch where Gray's hand is. Once it's inside a tray cylinder, he knows to go right up. Even if that wasn't the new rule this year, the cylinder rule is just a heads-up play because Young was sneaking in there trying to poke it free. Uh, it looks as if John Higgins wants to go over to the monitor to make sure that Young was behind the line, that this should be three free throws. I think that was what their initial ruling was, and they'll stay with that. Three free throws coming for Trey Young. Take a look. There's the feed. Yep, no doubt about it. That's just, you know, I was talking to one NBA scout about 30 minutes before this game, and I asked, what do you like about Trey Young? And he said, one word, feel. He's got an incredible feel for the game. We've seen it early. He is on his way to setting not only a new Oklahoma freshman scoring record, but a new Big 12 freshman scoring record. The all-time Oklahoma scoring record, Wayman Tisdale back in 83-84, averaged 27 a game. Well, right now, Young is well ahead of that pace at 29 and a half per game. So not just a freshman record, possibly, on the way in Norman, but the all-time scoring record in Sooners history. You know, I'm a Trey Young fan. I don't make any bones about it, but... To me, Wayman Tisdale, I don't know. If I'm voting, I'm, I'm, the U.S. Basketball Writers Freshman Award is named after Wayman Tisdale. With good reason. One of the great freshman seasons in the history of college basketball. 24 and a half points as a freshman at a time where teams weren't scoring like they score now. Obviously, yeah. that was before the three-point line. You know, he once had 61 in a game. That's not bad. Not bad. Evans with eight to shoot will drive it. With the left hand, McNeese sends it out of bounds with six to shoot. It will stay with Texas Tech when we come back. But it is a family reunion of sorts here in Lubbock, and history was made by Trey Young's dad 19 years ago this very night. We'll explain. If you could see your cough, you'd see all the sickness you're spreading. In the last nine minutes of a win, where not only was there a court storming, but Trey Young was at the game. He was only about four months old. And mom Candace handed Trey Young as that jumper comes up short for Jared Culver, handed Trey Young to his aunt so she could be part of the court storming. And it was a memorable night. Now Trey Young's got about 15 members of his family here tonight watching. McNeese oh. throws it down. It's unique athleticism for Jamani McNeese. When we talk about developing players. Juan Kruger and his staff have done a terrific job with that young man. Foul called on the drive by Keenan Evans. Well, and you know, the follow-up to that story, when Trey Young visited Kansas, he and Bill Self played a joke on 
Rayford, they said, we want to watch a little film of Kansas, how we play. But in fact, they loaded up the film of that game <laughs> when, uh, when Rayford had the 41 points. Let's watch Jamani McNeese. This is how you shoot 80% at the rim, which is what he's doing this season. Backdoor cut, tough catch by Zaire Smith. And a reset now, Eric Culver. Lost it. Crossover as McNeese tries to tap back the miss from Jordan Shepard. He'll try again, and he'll go to the line. Active to money McNeese so far. That young man born in Kankakee, Illinois, grew up in Dallas. He's a junior. He's a, he's a third year. He's a fourth year junior, so when they signed him, they were looking long term with this young man. He redshirted as a freshman, played very little on the final four team, but we've seen Bob four seasons of practicing games, how much he's improved. Young back in. As he replaces James. Now, if you're wondering why Texas Tech is struggling to get great shots, Kansas can switch at all four positions. And when you run an offense that's designed to screen, switching onto an open man negates the screen. So they're getting very few of these kind of open looks. Line drive three, Tommy Hamilton, his second yep. triple ties the game. Now the one guy that never screens is the five man. And when McNeese helped off that time in the offense, Tommy Hamilton, the fourth, knocked it down. Doesn't seem like the kind of big man you want to help off of. Oh, exactly. Let's watch. See, they're doing a lot of switching at four spots, but that time McNeese doesn't switch. He backs up to help on the cut, and that gives Hamilton room to knock that shot down. McNeese draws another foul. This time he's bumped by Hamilton. That's his second. Five Texas Tech team fouls now, so they only have one more to give. Now Stevenson, six foot five, guarding Trey Young. Young leans in, banks it home. We've said this before about Trey Young because of the ability to shoot the ball from the outside. Stevenson has to guard that. That makes Trey Young quicker to the basket. But good defense by Stevenson. Evans fouled on the floor. Take a look now. You've got to respect the deep shot. So Stevenson's got to guard the line, and that allows Young to get into the lane. And Bob, in the NBA, the floor is not going to be as crowded as it is in college. I don't care where you play. Damian Lillard played at Weber State. Steph Curry played at Davidson. You get to the league, and yeah, the talent level is higher, the athleticism greater, but the floor is more open for guys who can do what Trey Young does. That foul is on to Money McPhee. Here's Evans to the loose ball. Jump stop got caught under the basket and traveled. Take a look now. Watch on the drive. Didn't look like he moved his foot. May have slid it. That's five Texas Tech turnovers, although that one might have been a tough one on Keenan Evans. I, I like I like the start by Oklahoma. They're playing with poise. Culver now. He's a young. Young caught himself in a double team on the baseline and turned it over. Jared Culver goes behind the back, bounces one low. The extra pass and the finish. By Odiasse. How about the little dump down by Smith that time? Really nice. Two freshmen, then the big fella rewarded. Reach in foul called on Zaire Smith. It looked like he might have picked the pocket of Christian Doolittle. That's team foul number six on Texas Tech. A foul called by uh, final four official John Higgins. Little bump right there. John Higgins, a huge history in this building because 
19 years ago today when Rayford Young had those 41 points, one of the three officials was a young John Higgins. Great to see this building rocking and rolling. Coach Knight had it going here when Chris Beard was on that staff. Bob he set the all-time wins record for coaching since broken, but uh, Chris Beard remembers how this place was at times under Coach Knight. Perfect fit. Young tried to get cute and turned it over. Webster leans in, comes up short, fouled by Latin. That's the second on Kadeem Latin. Josh Webster, and you can see Trey Young try the bank it off the back of Odiase play as he tried to get a little cute on that out-of-bounds yes. underneath and paid the price with the turnover. I would call him an ambitious passer. You know, he tries to make a spectacular play because of that great confidence. And I remember a conversation I had with Bob McKill off the coach at Davidson a couple weeks ago about Steph Curry's freshman year, doing the same type of things, and he said, I'm going to start calling you Ichiro because all I want you to do is hit singles. Don't hit home runs. Doolittle, tough shot. Watch Tech's offense now. A lot of passing and cutting. Brandon Francis floating one to Odiase and a foul called on Christian James. Thursday night on ESPN, we'll have a Pac-12 showdown between number 17, Arizona, and number 25, Arizona State in Tempe. 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain Time. You can always watch it on the ESPN app. You're heading out west to watch Arizona, Arizona State. Should be a great, uh, great ball game at the Wells Fargo. DeAndre Ayton having a terrific year. The freshman, he'll be a top five lottery pick, maybe one or two. Odiase calls for a push in the back, and that was an easy one. The crowd doesn't like it, but that was pretty obvious as Odiase picks up his first. Well, I'm excited about it. Take a look now. Watch the drive and watch the big fella sneak in here and a little nudge with the right shoulder. Is that what you call that? A nudge? A nudge, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, on, on Thursday night, I get to see... And a resurgent Arizona State team that did not lose until conference play. Arizona's playing better. And Dave Bash and I get to talk basketball and not cacti of the Southwest. <laughs> hey, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll put my tie-dye shirt on. and I'm boning up on cacti yeah, of the Southwest. Go hang out and have some pastries with Big Red. If he wants to spend quality time. Big Red will be in port on Bill Walton in that crossover Part game. of the crossover, that's yeah. right. So free throws for Richard Odoms as both teams are now going to be over the limit for the rest of the first half. to the goal. Well, I think that ball just slipped out of his hands. Young, quick hitter to James. That goes over the backboard. Tied at 18. Under eight to go in the first half. What a scene here at Lubbock. That's all it is to add a line. With unlimited gigs? Well, then you're getting a line. And you get a line. Well, not a surprise, but definitely planning. Now, Oklahoma won that first game. But you can see that uh, it wasn't Trey Young's most efficient game. And Bob, by this time of year, opponents know Rashad Odoms drives left. 
Tommy Hamilton is a three-point shooter from the five spot. Brady Maddock, don't give him the corner three. And Trey Young, you've got to put a lot of length on him. And that's why we've got a slow, a slow low-scoring game so far. These teams, it's like old home week, second time through Big 12 play because of the double round robin. They just made an announcement here inside the building, and Chris Beard was waving to the crowd. I believe it had something to do with something coming from the crowd towards the court that they said, we see it again, it's going to be a technical foul. So Chris Beard, of course, waved to everyone here in Lubbock. Act the way you're supposed to act. And Jared Culver knocks down a three. Young looks to answer. Out of bounds. It'll stay with OU. Second time through the league, you should be dialed in on inbounds plays as well. James nice. rolls yep. home a three as a bullet pass was right on the money from Trey Young. It's hard to make that pass with where the backboard is. That was one. That's great vision right there. Usually the backboard gets in the way of the pass like that. Keenan Evans comes up short. Manic the rebound. Here comes Young. Again, the quick hit ahead and an offensive foul. Rashard Odom's leaned in the second time. He's guilty of a charge. Watch this pass from Trey Young. Now, when you throw it to the opposite side of the court, usually there's a backboard in the way, but look how he throws it right on a line, almost quarterback-like in the NFL, right? Through the defensive lineman, right to the open man. You know, speaking of scouting reports, Bob, you just mentioned Rashad Odom's got 2,000 charges so far. Speaking to the point that they know what he likes to do. finds Evans. Evans is held, so he will shoot. And that will be on Christian James. That's the second foul he's picked up since he came back in the game. Now, Bob, I want to make this as simple as possible from a coaching standpoint. Texas Tech runs an offense called motion offense. It's random movement with screens. So what Oklahoma does is they switch teammates to negate the screen. So a guy comes off, he's not open, someone else picks him up. And now what Texas Tech is doing to counter that is they're slipping the screen. They're screening quickly and getting out of there and cutting. And it's been a little bit more effective. But Keenan Evans, young man from Kirkman High School of Richardson, suburb of Dallas. We talked about how much better he gets year after year. The lob intended for McNeese. He couldn't elevate. Had to wait for it to fall in his hands. And with 15 to shoot, it'll stay with Oklahoma. Trey Young, of course, on both of those lists as well, as Young and Evans are both top 10 finalists for the Kuzi Award, top 20 finalists for the Wooden Award. So two great point guards going head to head. Well, how about this week? How about guys like uh, Donald LeCompte last night? Monte Graham. There's the top. Perfectly yep. done. McNeese throws it down. Yep, and a previous play, the defender got underneath McNeese and took away his elevation. That time, much like Mo Bamba last night, McNeese was able to get some room to use that athleticism. Culver leans in. That's no good. Young, the baseball pass again. Early in the year, he would have shot that right away. Now he does. Yeah. But Offensive rebound, Manic, and he missed a bunny. Early in the year, the Sooner team was making those shots. There's no hesitation at all. Look at this drive. Keenan Evans for the finish. We talked about switching. Sometimes you switch yourself into a mismatch. And when that happens, Keenan Evans takes advantage of it. Young finds Manic. Trey Young's got about 12 passes tonight that should be assists. Mayor Smith, shot 
clock under 10. Drives it. High off the glass. That won't go. The tip from Odiase. Comes up short. Nice wall off. By Christian Dulu. In and out for Young from three. Well, he's done a good job on him. He's challenging with that 6 5 frame. Evans shovels one off to Smith. For Andiga. Taken away. Good hands by Manic. And here comes Young. Oklahoma's not running the stretch. Oh. Young leans in and draws the foul. That'll be called on Brandon Francis. Watch how McNeese gets away from anybody's body. When he does that, he knows he's going to be able to get that ball on the top of the square. And so does Trey Young. And watch this right here. See this little confusion on the ball screen? Trey Young, Bob, Trey's not going to foul much in the first half. We saw last week against West Virginia that he'll guard, but like a great high school player, I don't know if Juan Kruger said this or he knows it in his head, I can't afford to be in foul trouble. But when that happens, sometimes he becomes a conscientious objector on the defensive end. So far, at least according to our official stat monitor, he has four assists. I want to recap. Well, I like I said. Than, I think he's made more than four passes that have been directly leading to baskets. I used to chart passes that led to great shots to reward the passer, even when his teammate didn't make the shot. He's doing that tonight. Immediate foul called on Matt Freeman. So free throws for Texas Tech. When we come back, trying to tie the game. The number one offensive team in America against the number one defensive team in the Big 12 here in Lubbock. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. At halftime, if Texas Tech wins the Big 12 and they win the Big 12 tournament, do they get a one seed? You're putting a jinx on them. Fran, for sure, I got a question for you. Texas Tech, do they remind yeah. you a little bit of South Carolina last year with Keenan Evans playing oh, the role of Sundarius Thornwell? That is a great call, Seth. Built on defense, veterans, couple for coaches, youngsters. I love that call. And in this year, Bob, this is a year where a Texas Tech could definitely get to a Final Four. And I think there's about 20 teams that could get there. That's a East with a chance for a three-point play. Do you think this Tech team maybe even has a little bit more offensive talent than that South Carolina team did last year? Well, uh, no, nah, I think, you know, Thornwell and, um, gosh, I can't think of the, uh, the, the guard. Uh, his dad played there. Rozier, uh, big guy. Anyway, they had, they had some guys that could really play. The Twins, that's Do Dozier, that's it. The Dozier Twins. Great find. Culver yeah. takes it home. Eyes from Justin Gray. Chris Beard has made no bones about the fact that guys like Gray and Evans, Smith, Odiasi, they were brought here by Tubby Smith. And it's great coaching etiquette when you talk about the predecessor and what he left behind. Because those seniors have been absolutely rock solid for this program, and uh, they set the course for the future is what they've done. Evans with the left hand. I don't know, Bob, if you feel the same way. Evans doesn't look like a great athlete. He doesn't look like he gets where he needs to get, but he always does. McNeese. Feeling it. Jamani McNeese is a feast or famine player, but if it's a feast night, he can have a big impact. And he has already in double figures here in the first half. Foul called against OU. Christian Doolittle is called for the hold. Well, Jamani McNeese over his last 10 games, so add in 11 games tonight. He is in double figures in three of those 11. But he's also had four games during that stretch where he didn't score a point. So he is the Dow Jones. I mean, he will either not really impact the game much 
or already 11 in the first half tonight. He had 14 against Kansas, three games ago, 16 against Texas, but a bunch of games mixed in there, no points, four points, two points, then all of a sudden explodes for a double-digit outing. Yeah, and I think it's because he's not a great offensive player, as you would think of one, but the one thing he does is, and he's proven this, he makes all of the shots around the rim. We've watched it, left hand, right hand. Tonight, everything's going in, but he knows who he is, and he's never taken a shot outside of his pocket. They're playing through him now. And he stepped on the end line. Four stop by Odiasa. Well, I like what Oklahoma has done. This is a team that's been reeling on the road. Tonight, they've taken this crowd out of the game with solid half-court defense. Evans gives it up to Odiasse. Can't hit the jumper, but Chase has got his own miss. Nine Stevenson. Has a three! Off the feed from Odiasse. Is that the play we always talk about? Offensive rebound, scramble, get to the line. It's always open. Now Trey Young will go to the line. Looks like it was Culver. Uh, shot him across the wrist. Bob Smart coaches back in 1987. They realized with the three-point line in play, when you get a miss, just run to the line. In that case, Stevenson didn't have to go anywhere. He just spotted up. But it's, it's, a, it's a proven, proven part of basketball. Norrin Sodiase, of course, he was not expected to play this kind of a role for Texas Tech. And again, like a great testament to the job that Chris Beard has done. There's the second best player, arguably, for this Texas Tech team on the bench, Zach Smith. Been out the last 10 games, a broken foot, might be done for the season. They're going to take the boot off in two weeks and see if maybe he can get back for tournament time. But this team is a top 10 team without their second best player. Yeah, and, and the irony of it is Lawrence Odiasi missed parts of two seasons with an injury, and, and Jack Smith was an all league player. McNeese, the block, and creates the turnover. This has been a big first half for Jamani McNeese. I can tell you this, he's a Dallas kid. Very few high major schools recruited him. That's a foul. And Young will go to the line. That's Culver again. And that's that quickness we talked about. Because Culver has to guard the line, everybody says Trey Young's not a great athlete. You don't have to be a great athlete if you make shots out there. You become quicker because you're defended out there. It's easier to get by, and Culver is a good defender. That's Culver's second foul in as many trips down the floor. And they're going to be cautious with him and make sure he doesn't pick up his third before halftime. Trey Young already 7 of 7 at the line. He has struggled on the road. A major drop in shooting percentage from three and from overall, although his numbers, at least points scored, basically the same. Only one field goal so far for Trey Young Fran, but he's got four assists. Yeah, he's done the job getting the, getting the ball to his teammates. In fact, they haven't rewarded some of his great passes. But it's interesting, Bob, in two games now against Texas Tech, he is 8 of 29 from the line. Young fouls Odiasa. You know what you love about that? Oklahoma Springs, their first trap of the game on Texas Tech, right? What did we watch today at the shootout? Did they not work on press offense? And they weren't even phased by the change of defense. Both teams over the 10 foul limit, so it's the double bonus. Although Odiase only a 58% free throw shooter. Now, one of those two-for-one situations. Trey Young just looked over at Ron Kruger. Ron Kruger said something to him. They get two shots here. The left hand, a little too strong. Plenty of time for the two-for-one, but a miss. They can actually go back the other way with it. They will. Brandon Francis tosses up an air ball. Tyre Smith, the putback won't go. Odiasse, he misses from point blank range. Another try, and a chance for a three-point play. This is not to diminish this young man's skill, but this is what we call playing hard is a talent. Misses, stays with it, stays with it. 
and gets the job done. That's effort. First foul on McNeese. About a two second differential. Now you see there's nobody in the post. There may be a screen that comes up, but it's really a decoy. I like the idea of letting Young drive into, into the open area now. No ball screen. Five to shoot. Manic for three. Way off the mark. And still about three seconds for Texas Tech to operate with before halftime. Down by one. Keenan Evans. It's to midcourt. Oklahoma by a point at halftime. Trey Young in the first half, only one field goal, but he scored nine points at the free throw line. So he's in double figures as he is each and every game. Stay tuned, the Alfa Romeo halftime report coming up after a short break. Today had 41 for Texas Tech and a win over Kansas. Here watching his son. Put up 11 points in the first half, helping Oklahoma to a one-point lead. It's another close game in the Big 12. Why not? Bob Oshuz and Fran Fraschilla set for the start of the second half. There are telling statistics, right? Barometers that coaches use. If you were looking for a very telling barometer for Trey Young and OU's chances in the second half, what would it be? Creating points, not only his own, but also his teammates' points. And we know as we watch Trey Young and two terrific players, we know that he's not shooting well tonight, but he is finding his teammates. And in fact, he's finding them at a level that is pretty good. They're not knocking down the shots. But then Oklahoma is going to have to account for this guy, the senior, Keenan Evans, on fire. Driving it, he's got a feeling, Bob, that he's going to have a big second half. He's done it so many times in his career. Trey Young and Keenan Evans, both on the Wooden Award Top 20 and the Kuzi Top 10. That's right on his average. 57% of their offense in the first half created by Trey Young. For the season, he has created 58% of their offense. So That's he's right. right where he needs to be in spite of an inefficient shooting. Match That's right. And, and, be, and anything over 55% this season, the Sooners are 12 and 2. At three, on the mark for the freshman, Zaire Smith. And just like that, Texas Tech retakes the lead. Over guarding Young again, but they're switching. Now it's Gray. Manic. Yes, what a look from Trey Young. That again was the quarterback, that window. Yep. He's like standing in the pocket and delivering a strike. Fun to watch. called on Manic. Let's watch. Watch him. There's a lot of switching going on. Look at that. Manic's just waiting there underneath. Little breakdown. He reads the switch. He realizes Manic is open, and that's important. He gets compared with Steph Curry all the time, and rightfully so. He is that kind of a talent, but as a passer, do you remember Steph Curry having that kind of vision? We know he could shoot when he was at Davidson, but in college, could he pass like that? Let me just tell you this. His first two years, he played a two-guard. He wasn't a point guard, Steph Curry, because Jason Richards, an outstanding player, was the point guard. So to your question, no, not early in his career. Not like this. Look at that pass. Odoms will go to the line. Again, it's Young finding a window in transition and creating an opportunity. You know, we've often said about Trey Young, great passers throw passes to teammates who don't know they're open. That was a good example right there of Rashad Odoms knew he was open so he ran hard and he was rewarded you know when you describe a great quarterback in football it's kind of the same terminology he has the ability to throw a guy open yikes Odoms only 59 percent at the line and this is the wrong end of the building to toss an air ball up
predictably strong on the second attempt. Keenan Evans. Yes. He had a good defender on him, Bob, and that's what we call great footwork. Stepped away from the defender, created space. Odoms with the reverse. And the reason he got that reverse, you remember what I said earlier? That sometimes when you switch, you switch yourself into a bad matchup. That time, Odiasi had no chance. Odiasi. Around left. Trey Young scoops and scores. Left hand. See that? That was the hand closest to the basket, so he just flipped it up. Odoms has a tough matchup, but he's their best defender on the perimeter. He's got Evans. There's only Trey Young's second field goal, but he does have 13. The majority of his damage done at the line. This is what we're talking about, Bob. When you switch, like Texas Tech is doing, you switch yourself sometimes into a bad matchup because Odiasi does not want to guard out on the perimeter, but because they switched, he's forced to, and Odoms took advantage of it. Little zone now by Oklahoma, first time tonight. Burying a triple, Keenan and Evans. They went under the screen and paid for it. Oh yeah, and it's second half time. Young answers. Evans got caught in midair and a foul called on the floor. Guess what? Trey Young stuck his hand in there. Are they going to give him three? Uh, nope. Immediately uh, okay. was signaled for a foul <laughs> on the floor. Chris Rastetter was emphatic that it wasn't a shooting foul, but well, Young does pick up the personal. Take a look, man. I don't know because Chris Beard is asking Keith Kimball right now, what's the difference? You know the difference is? Keenan Evans needed to let that go. He held on to it. I thought he was in the, in the shooting motion. Gray. Rainbow jumper is buried by Justin Gray. Trey Young, step back three. There's his first triple of the night. Did you see that footwork? Now, because he does that, that allows him to drive it. But since he's driving it, they start backing up, and now he knocks it down. He's like a pitcher with four or five pitches. Keenan Evans, step back, and that comes up short. Here comes Trey Young in transition. Like a lightning to the go, and draws the foul. Trey Young starting to heat up. Makes his first three of the game here in the second half, and he'll have a chance to give Oklahoma the lead when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Laura, your father's gone. You can pick up where he left off. We're getting the full arsenal from Trey. Well, this is why he's going to be a tremendous pro. Look how he backs up Brandon Francis because of the ability to drive it to the basket, knocks down the shot, and if there's any question about his speed, it's alleviated on that one play. We've seen some really good stuff. So, Bob, I'm going to give you a pop quiz, OK? Oh, no. My five characteristics of an NBA point guard, OK? Is he, is he, and be honest, does he have NBA athleticism? Yes. OK, I would say maybe. Can he shoot it? No doubt. Does he have speed and quickness? No doubt. Does he have an IQ and court vision? Oh, yeah. And is he a competitor? 100%. All right, so I think he's got at least four because the athleticism at the NBA level I mean, average. And here's what I would tell you. If you got all five, you're an all-star. If you got four of them, you're going to be a starter. He's got at least four. But very good. I live in New York. The Knicks right now have three 
um, point, guard. point guards that were all lottery picks. Yeah. Now, granted, none of them are living up to lottery pick ability right now, but Trey Burke and Moutier and Nilakina, I mean, he has the athleticism of all three of those guys. Yes, he does. I'm just talking about the guys that I'm watching every day when I'm back at home. Well, Maybe he... not the best example of like, not the Knicks, but... You know, I, I think you get my meaning. He can play, I think, from an athletic standpoint. Yeah, in the know. league tomorrow. That's a nice reverse by Brandon Francis. Texas Tech keeps putting those big guards on Trey Young. Culver, Stevenson, now Francis. They're just face guarding him. Christian James, he got off to a hot start. Been quiet since, but he'll go to the free throw line here. When you shut one player out like they're trying to do with Trey Young, it's like hockey, right? Four on four. There's more room for driving from his teammates. And that time you saw Christian James get himself to the basket. Less defensive help when you play that way. Shut out on one player. Friendly bounce for Christian James. He is in double figures for the 16th time this season. You don't have any doubt we're going down to the wire today. Right? To the Big 12. Cameron McCusty comes back in for James. Important game for Oklahoma, Bob. They've lost six straight on the road. Gives it right back. This is skill, Bob. You have to work on this move. Take a look at this step back move. Watch him drive Trey Young back, push off the front foot, and we'll get to that. It was pretty good. He broke everybody's ankles, including yeah. our tape machine. <laughs> Peace. Spins baseline. Offensive rebound, too little, and he's able to bank it in. Well, we saw Doolittle get 29 last year at Texas. He missed the first semester due to academic issues. Hasn't got back in rhythm yet. Francis leans in and scores. Yeah, that's the danger of switching right there. Trey Young was forced by the bigger Francis. Young goes to Hamilton. Wednesday, crossover night, ESPN and ESPN2, college announcers jump into the NBA, and vice versa. We'll have UB Brown and Jay Billis on the Virginia Tech Duke game. Mark Jackson and Dickie V on Clippers Celtics. P.J. Carlissimo and Dan Dockich get Kentucky Auburn. Big one in the SEC. And Doris Burke and Bill Walton for Warriors Trailblazers. It's a fun night. All four games available on the ESPN app, so you can watch them all simultaneously. couldn't control it. By the way, Bob, what a great homecoming for UB Brown going back to Duke. He was an assistant coach there in the 60s for a guy named Bick Boobus. You know who the other assistant coach was? Chuck Daly. Chuck Not a bad staff. No, Chuck used to let UB come over to the house and grab some of his old ties.
first time since December 29th he's had more than 11 points in the ball game. All right, it's worth a dance. Good game there. Well, Ravi, they are trying KU to keep pace with Texas Tech because it's 13 straight years of either winning outright or sharing the Big 12 title for the Jayhawks. If they are able to at least get a piece of the Big 12 title this season, they would break UCLA's all-time record. Standing in the way right now, the Red Raiders, who won at Allen Fieldhouse earlier this season, and still have a meeting here in Lubbock coming up with KU. Bob Schusen, Fran Fraschilla. It is wild here in Lubbock, and it's Keenan Evans that's lit this place up. Absolutely. The most decorated Red Raider since Andre Emmett about a dozen years ago. Eight to shoot. Trey Young won't waste any time. I think the goal tonight for Texas Tech in there. I don't know if they've achieved it yet as they're trying to make Trey Young inefficient. They know he's going to get his points. Good nice ball. look. Evans to the answer. Young tries to answer. That's short. He's still without a three. Earlier, I called one of his shots a three. It was actually a two. So Trey Young now 0 for 7 from three point land. Odiase on the deck. Gusty pulls up. Don't discount what Norris Sodiasi just did with that effort and hustle keeping Young from the basket. This is a selfless basketball team, Bob. Odiase chases his own miss again, saves it, and here comes Trey Young. He's the trailer. Hits a three. That's a big shot for Oklahoma. Ron Kruger's got Doolittle on the point guard. Stevenson shakes and bakes. The floater is pure. He's fouled. Reach in by Evans. Five point lead for Texas Tech. Back and forth we go. Absolutely. Odiasi inside. Trey Young diamond it. Magusti. That's all it is to add a line with unlimited gigs. Well then. WX3. We are back with Who's Flipping the Switch, brought to you by Boost Mobile. And Keenan Evans, he flipped the switch inside this building with that dunk down the lane. And in his last six games, it's been a different level score. Yeah, no question. He's, he's in the midst of one of the great careers in the history of Red Raider basketball in the Big 12. But it, he knows the moment. He's been so clutch for this team, this great run Texas Tech is on. And you see the athleticism, the senior leadership, and... Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, Chris Beard says it many times, Tubby Smith left a great foundation for this program, and this guy is going to leave here as one of the all-time greats. And you know what we call that, coaching etiquette 101. You know, when, you, when you inherit a good team, we reward the coach that you replaced. Little zone now by Oklahoma. You rarely see this little 3-2 zone. Just looking for a change-up defense that'll work. Shot clock under 10. Culver, nice backdoor look, hanging and unable to hit with Zaire Smith. Trey Young for the tie. Short. And that's out of bounds. Off of Christian Doolittle. Trey Young's played every minute tonight. That ball came up short. Just keep an eye on his stamina. Nice 
Smith with the left hand. Finding the loose ball, Christian James. That is Trey Young. Gonna knock down a three. 0 for 8 to this point. That triple goes down for Cameron McGusty, who last year in Big 10, Big 12 play. Led Oklahoma in scoring. Absolutely. 15 straight games in the league and double figures. Little different role this year. But we know he can put it in the basket. Yeah. Uh. Smoothly done. Deep post position for Tommy Hamilton. Texas Tech has done a really good job on Trey Young because they have four guys with the kind of length that can really disrupt him. There's a good example of that switch that we talked about. They just pass each other off to Trey Young. Spin moves, step back. That's off the heel. Or a long three that ends up going down for Christian James after McGusty. Oklahoma back on top. That's important for James' psyche. He only shoots 25% on the road behind the line. Culver in the corner. Long rebound. Good hands from Christian James. Young and sloppy with the pass. Ryan Stevenson down the lane. Shovels one off to Culver. The extra pass. And Zaire Smith is able to lay it in. Young, taken away by Hamilton. Outlets one to Stevenson. No one was home for OU. And the pass a little too hot. Well, it's Trey Young for Oklahoma. And yeah, Keenan Evans. But I'll tell you, you love the ball movement by the Red Raiders. Sire Smith almost throwing it down. Everybody says the Arby's logo looks clean against Virginia Tech. 5 of 21 from the floor, Bob. Well, Ravi, they have been waiting a long time in Charlottesville to get back to the days of Ralph Sampson to be the number one team in America. And UVA is back in spite of losing in overtime to Virginia Tech on Saturday. They are the next number one team, and we will see them next against Miami. That'll be a good game. Shot clock under 10 for the Red Raiders. And at Evans time. Double team. Sets up Francis. That's long. Maggie Manick able to corral the rebound for OU. Bob Kruger wants Trey Young to hit singles right now. Turns it over three times. Manick couldn't handle that pass. Evans swoops in. Fouled by Young. All right now the Joe Lenardi bracketology has Kansas as a two seed coming out of the Big 12. Where do you think Texas Tech would be? They got a head to head win at KU, and they're well, right now the leader in the clubhouse in the Big 12. Well, we've got a month to go, obviously, so this is pure speculation. But I've said all year, as competitive as the Big 12 has been, I don't see a, a favorite to go to the Final Four like Kansas in the past. Certainly Tech could do it. Kansas might be able to do it. Maybe West Virginia. But, Bob, what this league has is, and, and you want, I, don't, I don't know who said it last night, but it's, it's possible that we could have nine, eight or nine teams. Maybe eight would be realistic on the high end. Eight teams in the NCAA tournament from the Big 12. Trey Young right now is way too sloppy with the basketball. Bailed out, though, by Christian James. You could see, by the way, that last foul on Trey Young is his fourth. So he has to be very careful the rest of the way. Oklahoma staying in that zone. Culver can shoot it, and so will Evans. So will Francis. out of bounds 
He had McNeese pinned under the basket, but just couldn't handle the entry pass. James off the mark. This period signaling for some motion offense. You'll see, you'll see a lot of cutting and moving right now. Line drive three goes down for Keenan Evans. That's the best part of that offense. Young still can't buy a three. 0 for 9. That's ball right there. Competitiveness. Evans hit one. He tried to answer. Probably not a good decision. Ian Evans has four triples as part of his 23 points. And knocked away. He gathers seven to shoot. Drives it. Sets up goal. Too strong. And a foul call. And it looks like that's going to go against Christian James. It will. You know, Keenan Evans has been spectacular tonight. Look at that open look off a little bit of movement. Knocking it down. Fourth tonight. That's the fourth foul on Christian James. Doolittle back in for Manic. But Lon Kruger, at least with a little over five minutes to go, rolling the dice with Christian James and Trey Young, both playing with four. Odiasa needs help. All movement to the corner to Francis. Doolittle leans in, banks it home. One point game, four and a half minutes to go. That's a good decision by Young. He caught himself on the baseline, got it out. Boy, could they use a little more Christian Doolittle, Oklahoma. Sooner staying in the zone in a, in a sense to protect James and Young with those fouls. Tony Asse challenged at the rim. Second effort is there. And a timeout called by Chris Beard. Three-point lead for Texas Tech over OU here in Lubbock. Here in Lubbock before we get to the ACC and the number one team in America, Virginia and Miami on deck. We've got the number one player to this point this season in America in Trey Young, but he's being outplayed by Keenan Evans, and he's got foul trouble to worry about as well as the two best offensive players tonight for Oklahoma, Fran, have been Christian James and Trey Young, and they both got four. Yeah, and, and Texas Tech has done a great job on Trey Young. They're going to go, and they're going to try to trap the ball out of his hands. Tech is playing for a Big 12 title here. Not and, now, but down the stretch of this season. And James turns it over. What a remarkable run, Bob. 21-4, and 9-3 and three in conference play. We understand Kansas is leading up at Iowa State. Critical game for the Red Raiders. Stevenson finds Odiasse. Plus the foul. This drive now, smart play by Stevenson because he knows Young's got four, so he's got to stay out of the way. Stevenson gets all the way to the paint, drops it off, and how good has Odiase been tonight?
They're in a zone, but they're taking the ball out of Young's hands. That three cuts the lead in half. Huge shot from Christian James. One possession game. Coming up on three minutes to go. Possession arrow belongs to Oklahoma. Thursday night on ESPN, we'll have the Pac-12 showdown between number 17, Arizona, and number 25, Arizona State in Tempe. It'll be rocking at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain Time. You can always watch it on the ESPN app. Well, if, if uh, Texas Tech continues to double-team Trey Young, McGusty and James have got to be able to load the gun and knock down some shots. Young leans in, high off the glass, won't go. Foul call. And it looks like that will be a reach in on Christian Doolittle. Team foul number nine on Oklahoma, so the last one and one. Let's give Texas Tech credit, Bob. Their defense tonight has been outstanding, particularly on Young. They have so many big size guards that can play him. They forced him to a lot of inefficiency tonight. That's the fourth on Doolittle as well. So now Christian Doolittle, Christian James, and Trey Young all have four fouls for OU. Solid defense. Remember how McNeese was hurting the Red Raiders inside early? Could have gone either way. He traveled in charge. Stevenson. Cutter is Smith. They just don't take bad shots. They just don't take bad shots. Force one up with the shot clock winding down. And buried it from the corner. Naeem Stevenson. Largest lead for Texas Tech. Under two minutes to go. And the bonus there was that they used 30 seconds. Big triple knocked down by Cameron McGusty. And a timeout called by Lon Kruger. That shot was a must for Oklahoma to stay in the game. And McGusty connects. Oh, they moved the ball well. Oklahoma was solid. Let's take a look at this right here. Chris Beard's first recruit, Naeem Stevenson, out of Dallas, junior college transfer, knocking it down. And then they need more of this, the Sooners. For the rest of the season, McGusty and James have got to get back to the way they played early in the year. No hesitation, don't think, just shoot. Well, James and McGusty have combined for seven threes. So the teammates have been there for Trey Young. Young is 0 for 9 from 3. So his misses are really the difference right now. Yeah, I agree. But you remember coming in, Brady Manick, Christian James shooting 25% on the road. Now Young's got four, James has four, so they can't foul. Tech's going to use all 30 seconds. Evans drives it and finishes again. Another three for. 
from the wing for Christian James. Keeps the game alive. One minute to go. And Oklahoma still in it. Last possession that they can play straight up without fouling. for the loose ball is Christian Doolittle. And John Higgins, it looks like, going to ring him up and call a foul. And that will foul out Doolittle. I'll tell you what, Keenan Evans, we've been watching him. People in the Big 12 know about him, but look at this. This is, this is just great basketball. And, and this is a good sign for Oklahoma. Christian James has struggled on the road behind the arc. We've got Sports Center after Virginia Miami later on tonight with Linda Cohn and John Anderson. Tim Legler will break down the new look Cavs as they take on OKC. Giannis Antetokounmpo making a long distance wish come true. We'll fill you in on that. Tiger getting set to tee it up. Paired with Rory. At the Genesis Open this week, what he says will be different about his game. Sports Center, 11 Eastern. As soon as Virginia and Miami wrap it up, Coral Gables on ESPN and the ESPN app. Eighty-four percent free throw shooter at the line, Keenan Evans. There are just no holes in his game. No. Poised. Didn't come in with a lot of anticipation as a recruit. No, lost it. It has not been his night. Now this is an offense defense substitution with Lazenby and Shepard in because of the foul trouble. Don't get a steal, have to foul immediately. How much time can you allow to come off the clock? Now, now is when you start fouling. This is too much time. They're still not fouling, and they give up a cut to the goal. And finally, Lazenby. Is there more defending the basket than committing a foul to try and stop the clock? Zaire Smith will shoot two. That's puzzling strategy for Oklahoma. Down by six to allow that much time to come off. It, it's stuff that should be worked on every day in practice. Did you see how easy Texas Tech broke that pressure? It's the stuff we watched today at 2 o'clock. So Young and James back in with the four fouls yeah. because they've got to hoist threes now. And you think of the great coaching job done in college basketball this year. Tony Bennett, Bruce Pearl, Jay Wright, Matt Painter. How about the job this guy's done? Chris Beard. Stumbling it on the inbound. Young bails out Oklahoma. And it looks like he will draw a foul with 23 seconds to go. Coming into tonight's game, our BPI broke down the percentage chances to win or share the Big 12 title. And right now, they've got it as a two-horse race between Texas Tech and Kansas. Well, Texas Tech still has to go on the road at Baylor, Oklahoma State, and at West Virginia. And Bob, Kansas comes in here 12 days from now. Tech now out of fouls to give as they commit their seventh. And that is not what Chris Beard wanted to see. McGusty at the free throw line with a chance now for Lon Kruger to bring his foul group back in, make the substitution, and score at the clock stop. Yeah. 
with the line from Augusti. Kadeem Latin back in, and that allows Oklahoma to set up the press. About seven minutes away from the tip in Coral Gables, number one, Virginia. Newly crowned number one on the road. That game's coming up next. A foul given by Lazenby. And that will put Jared Culver, a 63% free throw shooter, at the line. Let's point this out. We've seen the brilliance of Keenan, Keenan Evans tonight. Texas Tech came into this year with five seniors, essentially. Nobody knew about Zaire Smith and Jared Culver, Bob. They're the second and third leading scorers in one of the top teams in the country. They're playing without Zach Smith, and those guys have picked the slot. Absolutely, and they're always out here in crunch time. Think about that. Is Christian James foul given by Latin? Now check that. The clock continued to run. So they may have to go to the monitor just to clean up the clock, but all that's gonna do is add to the amount of time that student section can celebrate what is going to be another Texas Tech win, and they're gonna maintain their lead over Kansas at the top of the Big 12. And this will be the seventh straight loss for Oklahoma. And the interesting thing, Bob, is this is an Oklahoma team that has six top 25 wins this year. Number one in America. Yeah. And four against the top 10, including that number one. Well, when the committee came out with their first projected top 16 seeds this past weekend, there were some eyebrow raising seedings on that list. Oklahoma was one of the teams that seemed way too high, having lost six of their last eight, three in a row, about to lose seven of nine with the loss tonight. But when you look at the resume as a whole, the committee is telling you all of those top flight wins that they've had, six against the top 25, even earlier in the season, count for a lot in that full body of work. Yes, and they'll get a couple more at home. But you know how much time I spent when the committee came out with their uh, seating Sunday? I'm gonna, I spent about I'm gonna 30 get a short seconds. amount of time. I spent 30 seconds on it. It's because you're not a talk show host. Well, maybe. <laughs> if you were taking calls, that stuff's gold. <laughs> Nothing's better. Everybody calls up all angry. It's great stuff. So some academic free throws at this point for Naeem Stevenson. The number seven team in the country about to get it done at home. And we're about to find out on the road what the number one team in the country can do as they've got a stiff challenge tonight against Miami. Yeah, and uh, Brown out for the season for Jimmy Laranagas Club. Lonnie Walter's got to pick up the slot. Juan Drew. Stifling Virginia defense. Does it travel on the road? It usually does. Trey Young scoops one. That rolls off. And that makes it official. Another win for Texas Tech, 10 and 3 in the league. And they maintain their lead over Kansas in the Big 12. 88-78 is your final.